Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. Today I am in my storage room where my network rack is located, it's just beneath me. I will show you my rack in a few minutes. The reason I am here today is because today I am swapping out this UDM device. I hope you'll see it in, in the focus. The UDM is a great device, it's excellent, it's a powerhouse, it served me so well. But I am swapping it out with this UDM Pro. Oh yes, UDM Pro. The reason I am doing it is because first I will be placing this UDM in my parents' house and I have a need for the Unify Protect capabilities of the UDM Pro. I will be in the near future placing some Unify cameras around the house so uh, the Unify Protect will come in handy. One thing I will be uh, addressing in later videos is the process of the whole migrating from UDM to UDM Pro. There are a few things we will need to do for example, we will need to take a backup from the UDM, which is pretty easy. We will need to hook up the UDM Pro to network, power, ISP, etc. Configure it with the most basic stuff just to get out of the wizard. We will need to upgrade uh, uh, the UDM Pro in firmware and also the Unify, uh, Unify controller version to match the UDM. I have recently upgraded the UDM to a Unify controller version 6.0.28 if I'm not mistaken. So we will need to upgrade also the UDM Pro. And once they are matching in controller version, then we can restore the UDM in the rest with the restore file, with a backup file, sorry, and restore it to the UDM Pro. So this will be the process. One more thing I will need to address in the future is just behind this wall, is my office where I'm uh, usually working and this UDM also provided the Wi-Fi coverage to the uh, room uh, behind the wall. So the UDM Pro does not, uh, 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 does not serve Wi-Fi unlike the UDM. So I have also purchased uh, a Unify in-wall access point which I will also uh, demonstrate in later videos. So uh, uh, I will try to, uh, uh, to show you my rack with this camera. I hope it will be stable enough. So bear with me. This is my humble network rack. And what we have in is just two desktop computers, two Synology devices. This is my primary one. This is my backup one one Unify 24 uh, Gen 2 switch and the Unify UDM which I have al already unboxed and placed in the rack. So all we have to do to kick, to kick things off is to uh, hook up the UDM Pro, connect it to everything and go to the computer to see uh, 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 the progress of, the, of this project. So I hope you will join me and let's, stay, let's go over to the computer to start working. All right, so we are at the computer. We have plugged the UDM Pro to power, to network, to the ISP. We, we waited a few minutes for the UDM uh, to uh, come online. I've unplugged my computer from my current home network, which is uh, connected to the UDM, and I've connected it directly to the LAN ports of the UDM Pro. Now, as soon as the computer got a DHCP address from the UDM Pro, a web page just popped up to start a, 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 to start configuring the UDM Pro. I actually didn't even do anything to get this a, 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 this page or wizard come up. It, it just did, which is great. But if it doesn't come up, all you have to do is to open up a browser and go to the default IP of the UDM Pro, which is 192.168.1.1, and you will be brought to this, uh, uh, to this wizard right here. 
Now, I haven't done this in advance. I am doing it. I am doing it today with you uh, 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 live for the uh, actually not the first time, but the first time of this device. So, for uh, uh, the lack of a better idea, I will call it Wasteland U UDM Pro just because my UDM, my regular UDM was called a Wasteland UDM. Agree to the uh, uh, terms and licenses. Click on next. Now, I don't know if, uh, if you already know it and you already have it, but if not, you will have to open a UI account in advance. You can create it right now. It will take you through the process of creating a Unify sign-in address. I already have mine, so I will enter it right here. And click on next. By the way, I also strongly advise using the second factor of authentication using your mobile phone. I will enable it in a later, in a later video in this series of videos. Update schedule. Now, this is completely up to you. I don't mind having my, uh, uh, my update schedule happen daily at 12 a.m. Uh, uh, this, uh, this device will serve my house and not my business. So for me, it's actually uh, pretty okay. Auto-optimize and send diagnostic and performance information. Something that uh, I will, uh, I will uh, leave it to your uh, judgment. But what I can recommend is actually to use the auto-optimize. Unify will know uh, how, to, uh, uh, how to better utilize your uh, 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 Wi-Fi coverages with your access points, set network uh, uh, um, channels, broadcast channels, uh, um, doing some uh, um, um, backstage settings. Uh, you can configure all of these settings on your own. But uh, doing the auto-optimize will uh, allow your Unify controller to be responsive. For example, if uh, in a certain point in the future uh, in the, uh, the controller will identify that uh, channel 11, for example, on the uh, 2.4 GHz spectrum is, uh, is uh, crowded, it will move you to a, another channel 6 or uh, channel 1 just to, be, uh, not, uh, to, better, uh, to better utilize your spectrum. So I do recommend using the auto-optimize. Speed tests. The reason, by the way, that uh, the UDM will now do some speed tests is to provide some sort of a baseline for something they call, they call smart queues, some sort of an implementation of QoS. I will not be using it. Um, so this is something that is completely, um, let's say, optional. But it will give you a good baseline reading if your UDM is actually able to, uh, 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 to fulfill or to utilize what you're getting from your ISP. I am I'm supposed to get uh, 500 down and 50 up. So I will probably address this uh, speed test maybe in a later point in time. I will provide the real numbers that I am supposed to get. But again, smart queues is something that I, for myself, just for my opinion, I will disable it. But if you, if you want to uh, 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 use this option, let me know in the comment section below and we will investigate and explore it together in future videos. All right, that's a summary of, uh, uh, of the settings that uh, uh, we have provided, our UDM account, our, uh, our location, our time zone, etc., etc. We will click on finish and the UDM will start to set up itself with the most basic out of the box uh, settings. We will of course, uh, for, for the goal of uh, migrating from a UDM to a UDM Pro, we will need, uh, as I said, to match the versions and to upgrade the firmware, but just for, uh, uh, just for my convenience or let's say safety, I will be configuring this UDM Pro uh, um, independently as if I am not interested in migrating from the UDM just so I would have some form of a backup I can export 
and import in case something something goes wrong. So I will configure a Wi-Fi network, maybe not all my VLANs, just one VLAN or two VLANs, some sort of a, a, a threat protection settings, uh, uh, really a, a few basic settings here and there, and then I will take a backup. This will be the backup, my safety backup, I call it. This will be a backup file I, am, I will be able to restore without relying at any, uh, on any time on my UDM uh, backup file. This will be my, uh, my local UDM Pro uh, backup file, just in case something, is go, something goes wrong. So, I will let this device update itself, it will probably reboot itself, and I will resume the recording once it's done. Alright, so the device has updated itself, it uh, rebooted itself, it came back on, and this is our main, uh, our main menu uh, on the UDM Pro device. Now, first of all, what I, would li what I like to do is to first go to the settings area and configure, uh, um, um, and, and configure and see what's going on inside my UDM Pro. For example, I can see that it updated itself for, uh, in version uh, to firmware version 1.8.0. Just to be on the safe side, I will check on click uh, on check for updates. No updates, that's fine by me. Moving on to the applications, all right, we will, uh, we will discuss them in a later video. Let's go to advanced. SSH, for now, I am not, uh, I am not going to enable it. I will need it in, later, uh, in a later video, but for now, I am uh, disabling it. Device name, update, uh, update frequency. A release channel that's fine we start power off great great nothing else uh, uh, that uh, uh, that is critical for us in this in this area but it's something that I w uh, highly recommend going in see what is there for us for example uh, uh, I have uh, I gotten many questions about how to power off a UDM no, uh, uh, all the people that have asked me looked for the power off somewhere in the Unify controller so it's not there, it's in the settings menu of the device, right here, for example. All right, let's go back to the main menu, and as we can see, a, a firm, firmware version 1.8.0 is bundled with a, a, a Unify controller version of 5.14.22. That's, in this, in this version, we will not be able to restore the UDM backup file to the UDM Pro. We will need to upgrade the Unify controller version manually, which is something that I will do in the next video of this series. But for now, let's go into the network and start configuring the most basic of settings, again, just to have something to restore to in case something goes, goes wrong. All right, so this is the main menu. I am assuming that all of us uh, Unify users are already, already familiar with. By the way, there is a new, uh, uh, a new main controller wi uh, window uh, with a new design. It's uh, right now. I think it's still in uh, in uh, uh, preview, so I'm not allowed to show you or talk about. Uh, uh, so let's dive in uh, uh, to the uh, statistics. Nothing to see here. Map. Nothing is still uh, uh, is still populated. We still do not have any devices. All right, so nothing interesting here. Let's go to the settings area. And let's, let's create a Wi-Fi network. Click on advanced. I will call it just, just, for, uh, just for now. I will call it Wasteland Wi-Fi. I will enable this network. It will be with WPA. Let's give it a password. Guest policies. This is not a guest network, so I will not bother with it right now. Uh, um, let's let's say, uh, um, let's see what else we can uh, we can enable. Well, Nothing more that, uh, that we can use right now. 
Right now we are focusing on the most basic of settings. So we have a Wi-Fi network. Let's see on advanced, enable outdoor mode, um, something that I'm not yet familiar with, so I will leave it for now. Let's look at our internet connection, enable speed test. This is something that I can, we can configure the UDM to do on, on a schedule, not something that I am not interested at all. WAN networks, so this one is our LAN or a, a, let's say RJ45 based connection. And this is our a, a SFP based connection. All right. Something that is very missing, at least for me, is the, the fact that they are not showing your WAN IP address right here in this menu. It, it, really, it really bothers me. Maybe I'm missing something. No, I don't think so. All right. Networks. I will not create VLANs right now. I want only the most basics of settings. So the uh, default LAN IP is fine by me. Threat management, I always turn on, especially with the UDM Pro, which is capable of providing three, at least on, on paper, I think it's 3.5 gigabytes throughput with IPS turned on. This is amazing. It's something that we, we as Unify users are not used to getting uh, with the Unify hardware. So I will be turning it on into the prevention uh, not the detection, I will add some bad reputation sources here. I will protect against, I don't know, FTP, ICMP, Telnet. Okay, let's see what else. Let's see what I am missing here. I, why not? Let's enable bot C Trojan protection. Let's protect against these. Again, the UDM Pro is more than capable of handling this. All uh, kind of uh, IPS signatures and protections, which is great. It's so it's so great to have. Again, I'm not used to getting uh, to getting it as a as a Unify user. Uh, to the fact that I, uh, for several years I've completely passed on using Unify Gear as my gateway and I used to use PFSense so I only had Unify switches and access points but none of the Unify uh, uh, a lineup of gateways but now I can easily say that the UDM and UDM Pro are more than capable all right let's move on Uh, firewall, oh, of course, I want to stay and save. Let's see what's wrong. Oh, light changes, right. Okay, firewall, something that uh, deserves a video on its own. I am not going to get into it right now, especially when none of my regular VLANs are created. So. This is definitely something that I will address in future videos, just the, the portion of the uh, Unify Firewall. VPN, not relevant for now. Dynamic DNS is something that I will configure because I do have a, a, a dynamic DNS account. All right, port forwarding, something that I will do, but I will do it uh, once I get uh, 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 the migration finalized because I do have port forwarding already configured on the UDM. Let's go through some preferences.
All right. That seems pretty good. Here is how to enable or disable the auto optimize we have, to, uh, we have talked about in the beginning of this video. Device authentication. Now, this section will change the default username and password of the, uh, the SSH uh, uh, devices of, the, of Unify. What I mean by that is what I configure here as username, for example, admin, will now be the SSH username not only in my UDM Pro, but in my access points, switches, and all my Unify gear that has SSH uh, uh, built into it. So keep that in mind, because the default username and password of UBNT, UBNT, is hardly enough uh, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be considered secure. All right, moving on. I will enable advanced features. Let's move on. Updates, that's fine, that's great. Firmware, enable automatic firmware upgrades. I tend to do use it. In my experience, the former upgrades in the Unify ecosystem is something that I have never had any issues with. I don't remember even a single time where Unify pushed out, at least for to me, a bad firmware which caused some sort of, a, I don't know, a, a devices malfunctioning. But what I will do is to create a schedule so firmware, firmware upgrades will not happen during the day, for example. So I will say um, nightly upgrades and let's set it for say weekly on Saturday starting at 2 a.m. That's enough for me. I will select uh, my device here but I will have to go back and select all my future devices that will be adopted by this UDM Pro. By the way, you can create uh, separate schedules for separate devices. If you want your, I don't know, access points to only upgrade during the weekends and switches during weekdays at night. So there's a whole lot of uh, flexibility here in the upgrade schedule. Advanced uh, updates. Let's see, that's fine. Let's log in, so we will be able to get our updates and firmware updates, that's great. Let's go to the controller settings, controller name Unify. I will change it just to match my FQDN of my domain name. All right. All right. Backup. Now, this is something that I really recommend enabling backup uh, creating a backup schedule of some sort I even uh, um, I even tend to do it on a weekly basis on Saturday somewhere around 5 a.m. and apply this is something that will create a backup for me uh, every every Saturday something that I can uh, rely on instantly downloading and restoring to and this is especially useful in production environments where you have several admins changing settings or doing things and something breaks, you can automatically restore. Here you will have a list 
of the, uh, of the most recent backups, you just click restore and it restore to the last, uh, to the last backup where you know things have worked. Uh, uh, so very handy, I really, uh, uh, really recommend. Advanced configuration. Now, this is something that uh, uh, is more uh, relevant to uh, using a controller which is not in, in the UD, like in the UDM uh, lineup where the controller is, uh, is built in to the device and there is no multi-site. This is something that I do use on my uh, cloud-based controller where I support several clients. Uh, it's very handy to divert them automatically after adopting them, after con uh, contacting the devices. Uh, uh, you need to override, uh, you can override to be sure that they only contact a certain uh, controller uh, which is yours. I will change here to my uh, Unify FQDN just to be on the safe side. And since UDM and UDM Pro controllers are on-prem uh, uh, and there are no uh, multi-site and there are no uh, devices from different locations uh, usually that will be adopted into this uh, single site, there is no actually no use for this overriding option so I will keep it off all right everything at least in the most basic uh, uh, basic baseline at least for me seems to be uh, let's say enough or sufficient to have something to restore to and now I will, uh, what I will do right now is go to the backup section and manually create a backup. All right, now a backup has been uh, created and now I can download it. So this one right here is from a UDM which I already downloaded. And this one is from a UDM Pro. As you can see, the version of the controller is the, is the prefix of the file name followed by date. All right, so let's save it just to have something to grab onto if, something's go, if something goes wrong, sorry. So this is the, base, the most basic of settings. Of course, this is not by any means how I would configure a UDM controller or, or, or a Unify controller in production uh, I will create a separate video on how to properly configure a Unify device uh, with all the proper settings and VLANs and firewall settings etc. For now this is a baseline just to have something to restore to. In the next videos we will complete the migration process. We will upgrade the UDM Pro controller version manually which is on its own something that not many uh, Unify users know that it's even possible. Uh, I've been talking a lot of, uh, with a lot of people that say, that, that think that the Unify controller is bundled with the UDM and, ca and cannot be uh, upgraded. That's a mistake. We will cover it in the later video. Thank you so much for being here. Again, if you uh, have, uh, think that I should, uh, should have done something differently, please let me know in the comment section below. I always like to hear different opinions and learn something new. Please let me know in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.